Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the MBK or Monterey Bay Knives VLD. What does VLD stand for? Apparently it stands for very low drag, which is that's humorous. Um, I, <laughs> I thought that was interesting when I read that. Um, this is a uh, Peter Carey design and I, I will admit I am not familiar um, with Mr. Carey, um, but this is very cool and there's a lot of good stuff here. We're going to talk all about it. First off, this knife was sent to me by at Mild Mannered EDC on Instagram. Please give him a follow. It's because of people like him that I'm able to bring you guys daily knife content. It is also because of my generous patrons. Thank you very much for supporting me right now. If you'd like to get your hands on some cool stickers and other benefits, there's of course a link right down in the description. Your support means the world to me. And please follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. All right, so first off, I think I did, I tried to do some checking around. I think these are sold out right now. I know you guys get mad at me when I review knives that are sold out, but the goal of this channel is not just to get you to buy something. It's, I wanna look at stuff that's interesting. And this was interesting. This was recommended to me um, by Mild Mannered. And uh, I'm glad that he did because this is cool. As far as I can tell, it came out in a few different variants, uh, at least this micarta variant and a carbon fiber variant. The carbon fiber variant uh, ran $200. I'm gonna guess this one is right around the same point. In this case, we're looking at micarta and M390, or on the other one, it would have been uh, carbon fiber and M390. Um, let's go ahead and get a measurement on this guy. There are other MBK knives though, and if I have links for those, I will link them down below. MBK has had some pretty good stuff on my channel in the past, so I urge you to at least go check, uh, check out what they've got available, um, if I can provide links. Uh, let's see here, overall measurements, overall length coming in just, is it a hair shy? A hair shy of eight inches. Blade length is coming in at exactly three and a half. Your cutting edge is coming in at 3.3 inches overall. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat. Where is that? There it is. The Ontario Rat Model 1. Rat 1 is coming in at 8.6 inches overall. So you can see this is still definitely a big knife. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? Spyderco PM2 is coming in at 8.3 inches overall. How about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue? Ritter Hogue coming in at 8 inches overall. You can see there it's very similar in length to the Ritter Hogue. How about up against the Spyderco Para 3? Spyderco Para 3 is coming in at 7 and a quarter inches overall. And last but not least, the Benchmade Mini Griptilian. Mini Griptilian coming in at 6.75 inches overall. How is the action on this guy? This is running on bearings. Very satisfying. Um, I uh, I checked, I, I made it a, a slight adjustment on the pivot to check something here. Um, and uh, truthfully, um, it actually is fall shut. I think I might have it just a hair tight. That was my, my adjustment to check something else. But truthfully, this thing was completely fall shut when I got it. But I wanna point this out. Flipper tab's a bit sharp, right? I mean, I'll, honestly, I think I can shave my fingernails just a little bit is it not gonna it's not gonna show up on camera so i'm not gonna be able to prove my point it's a little you're gonna have to take my word for it it's a little bit angular the teeth are a little bit bitey but it's in a good place and you can push button it or you can light switch it and i'm sure some of you guys are thinking right now man that makes a satisfying noise yes it does because there's an audible break of the detent and an audible click into position so oh i love that sound click click i love that does it add anything, you know, any utilitarian benefit? No, not at all. But man, is it satisfying. It's uh, easy to disengage, easy to deploy. There's a hint of lock stick, just a hint. That's not a big deal. If your knife has lock stick that looks like that, sounds like that, feels like that, that's not a big deal. The only, pro the only time that lock stick is a problem, and it'll likely go away. I've had tons of knives, owned tons of knives that came with a little bit of lock stick and it slowly wore down and eventually went away. I've only had one knife that actually got worse to the point where I could not uh, disengage the lock bar without using uh, a coin or a tool, right? It's only happened once. I've handled a ton of knives. If it gets to the point where you cannot disengage it without an extreme amount of force or using a tool, then you have a problem. If it's sticking, I, 
a little bit of stick really doesn't bother me. It lets me know that everything is locking up tight and that the geometry is good and it's not going to disengage, right? So that doesn't really bother me that much. But man, the sound of the action is very satisfying, easy to disengage. There is no, uh, uh, what do I call it? The double clutch, right? And uh, the flipper tab is just a little bit sharp, but that's okay. Um, so let's go ahead and move on here and do a hardware check, get out my tools. You can pick up my tools down in the description. These two at the bottom here are inexpensive. Um, the pivot is actually a T10 I came to find out here. Uh, I'll show you guys here real quick. That's a T10. I will admit it's a loose fitting T10 and the next size that I have up is a T15. So there may be some, you know, an in-between size is going to fit a little better, but a T10 will turn it. These guys right here are T6 and there are undoubtedly more screws underneath that I hope are not T6, but probably are. So that means if you're going to disassemble this guy, you're going to be looking at uh, a few extra T6 screws. You guys know my thoughts on that. I'd rather they be T8 because T6 strips a little bit uh, easier uh, and there's quite a few screws. So just make sure that you've got something to keep everything in. Um, no big deal there. Let's go ahead and do carry profile up against the Spyderco Para 3. That's a thick boy. Woo, man, this is thick. Um, there is some pretty heavy chamfering here, and I do appreciate when a knife fills the hand, so there's a benefit there. But people, you know, if the, if the pair of three is too thick for you, then this guy's definitely going to be a little bit too thick for you. So just keep that in mind. Height and length up against two knives that have awkward carry profiles that nobody ever seems to complain about. Para 3 and PM2, a little longer than the Para 3, just a little bit and a little shorter than the PM2, even including the flipper tab, it's not nearly as tall as either. So it's really just gonna be the thickness that might bother some people. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of the blade stock. Uh, where's my calipers, there they are. Um, blade stock thickness, I'm gonna guess this is 100 and, whoops, 145 thousandths, maybe 150 thousandths. Okay, it's 140 thousandths, that's fine. Not too thick, not too thin. Um, you're looking at a combination, let me get my magnet here just to be sure, a combination of titanium, yeah, titanium clip, titanium liners, micarta, and let's take a look at the inside here to see, you can pick up my flashlight in the description. Uh, no milling on the inside of the scales. Can we get in there where you can see? Yeah, no milling on the inside of the scales. So, um, not a super thick blade. Not a super huge knife, but it's still gonna come in at a full size weight for sure. 4.3 ounces, that's not bad considering the beloved uh, Ritter Hogue it comes in at 4.52 today. The scale kind of goes back and forth on that, but yeah, not a big deal. If you regularly carry full size knives, this is not gonna be a problem for you. If you carry smaller knives and you wear lighter pant material, it might be a problem for you. And if you, if you can't carry knives in your area that have, uh, you know, blades longer than three inches, right, then this also might be a problem. But for the most part, it's okay. It's just a little bit thick, but I do like that. I do like that it fills the hand, right? So that's fine. Um, did we get through all of that? I think we did. I always have to do a mental check. So let's go ahead and talk about the uh, anatomy here, the aesthetics. Um, I like the pivot. Looks nice. It's got a little bit of sort of bead blasting and then the, the, uh, the raised areas are polished, right? The micarta looks fantastic. You know what's funny is I don't really like, I don't traditionally like OD green on G10, but when it's in micarta, I really like how it looks. Micarta is great, arguably just as durable. It will pick up hand oils over time, right? So it's gonna darken up and is it, but I've heard that you can just scrub it out. If you want it to look just like new, you can use some soap and water and scrub it out. I think you better double check on that. I've actually never done that. It's just what I've heard. Um, the edges here are, I mean, for all this heavy chamfering that looks great and it, it fills the hand, right? The corners are a little bit sharp. These areas here really, I think could have been knocked down a little bit and it would have been a lot. This is honestly does feel kind of like holding a rounded brick. Um, I'm not gonna say it's really gonna be that big of a deal during use. Um, this area right here, because there's some teeth right here, they're a little bit sharp. This is the area that's gonna start to bother you if you're really bearing down on this thing. But if you're gonna bear down on this thing for a long period of time, you should be wearing gloves, which will mitigate that. Uh, for simple cuts or light cutting for a little bit of time, it's not gonna be that big of a deal, but I really would have liked to see the corners knocked down just a little bit more. Um, back here, this is flawless. <laughs> Oh man, there is no way to distinguish the transition between micarta, titanium, micarta, titanium, micarta. Man, they just nailed that. That is beautiful all the way back here. This looks really, really great. I like that. Um, 
Up here it says carry design, and on the other side it says MBK. Uh, I'm not seeing a marking for M390, but as far as I know, these are M390. This is a satin finish blade. It honestly looks a little bit better than some of the satin finishes that I've seen, right? A lot of times with satin finishes on like cheaper knives or just, you know, where they're just trying to get a finish on it real quick, there's what I'm, I've come to learn is like belt burn or inconsistencies in like coloration. Like you can see the lines there, right? Um, that's fine, but like when you see, you know, darker or lighter areas, that's uh, that's belt burn or, or blotchiness. And uh, that, that bothers me too. This knife does not have that. It's really, really nice. Up here, edges are a little bit sharp. That's usually a product of a satin finish. I would have preferred, honestly, the blade to look exactly like the pocket clip. I think that would have been awesome, but it doesn't, it's not that big of a deal. There's a flat that carries out about 60% the length of the blade, right? And the blade stock is not thin, uh, but it's not thick either. I think there's plenty of durability out to the tip. It is pretty, yeah, that you might not want to drive that in and start prying with it, right? This isn't uh, M4, it's not D2, it's not a tougher steel, it's, um, it's uh, M390. So I don't know, it's not the thinnest tip I've ever seen, but I do like the blade profile. It does get reasonably thin down here at the edge, and I think you're going to be just fine for your heavier tasks. You're going to be fine for your EDC tasks if this is the size of blade you like to carry, right? They also have jimping that extends out right where it's supposed to. Ergonomically, this thing is very comfortable. There's a large uh, sharpening choil that some people might try to cheat and put their finger up there. I'd advise against that. I'd keep it back here. You are quite a ways from the cutting edge, maybe three quarters of an inch, right? Not that big of a deal. I think, honestly, I mean, this is a knife that I could see myself reaching for to use. Um, and I think it'd be comfortable to use for a, a you know reasonable amount of time. There's just a couple of little sharp edges that make it probably it's something that might be annoying. Not an issue, just kind of annoying uh, over, over time. Uh, I love the pocket clip. I love how it looks. It doesn't carry deep, but it also doesn't carry shallow, which is fine. I like these little holes right here. I also like... Um, you know how the the pocket clip looks it's nice and flat it's nice and rounded off unfortunately it eh, no it's more of a ramp it's just a very low ramp right the in the end of the pocket clip does not swoop up which means it's still going to fight your pants but as long as the seam is at or below this area right here it's still going to slip over there readily but the pocket clip looks great with the design. It also carries nicely, uh, fits uh, really well in the pocket and sort of carries at the right angle. These little holes, yeah, I, I like them. I like how they're on both sides. It's just adding a little bit of flair to something that would otherwise be kind of simple and boring. There's a lanyard hole. It's really small, whatever. If you really like lanyards, you're really gonna have to stuff the 550 in there, but you could go with some smaller stuff, whatever you wanna do. Um, this side looks much the same as this side. Uh, there's only one position for the pocket clip, right hand and tip up only. Sorry, lefties, but it's a flipper, so the fact that it's tip up does make sense. Um, yeah, there's not much else going on on this side. Um, this is a titanium uh, lock, and honestly, I did not check to see. I'm going to brighten up the flashlight here real quick and see if I can see it in my light. Eh, there is no... Sorry about that. I was trying to see in my light there. There is no uh, lock bar insert, but that's okay. It means this is likely a carbonized titanium lock face. Probably why we're getting just a little bit of stick there, but that's okay. Like I said, it's not that big of a deal. It's very light. It takes very little pressure to disengage it. And there is plenty of access to it too, right? It's cut nicely. It's a little bit sharp in here as well. Little bits, right? If you're going to sit here and flip this over and over again, you're going to notice this area right here, your index finger, and then eventually, you know, the tip of your thumb where you're disengaging it. And it's not so much the lock stick there, it's just how sharp that is. This, this needs to be knocked down, in my opinion, uh, and that would make it a lot more comfortable. The centering on this guy is a little bit off, and that's kind of a bummer because this is a $200 knife. As I've said in other videos, you know, it's, if it's like 50 or less, I'm kind of like, ah, okay, you know. I still think knives that cost 30 or more should be centered as, you know, I've handled tons of knives from Civivi and CJRB that always have, well, I mean, for the most part, have perfect centering, right? So it's like, if they can do it, then the tolerances that are put into a knife like this, right, you'd expect it to be centered. And I'm not saying that some don't slip through the cracks, right? And on top of that, um, it's possible that we just have a, I, here's, when I was talking about making an adjustment earlier, I saw that it was a little off-centered and I thought, Oh, I'll just adjust it. So I went to adjust this and found out it was free spinning. You have to put a bit in on both sides, which kind of sucks, but if you've got two bit drivers, you can do it. And I cranked on it a little bit, got it just tight enough where the action was still close to where it was. Initially, it was exactly, it was right here, and the blade was falling shut, right? It didn't, me cranking on a little bit, 
made it a little bit tighter, but it didn't change the centering at all. Um, and so that's why I was saying that the action actually is false shut. I've just, I've tightened it a little, I could loosen it up a little bit. So it's possible that I could take this scale off and adjust the body screws and do that thing. I have a video on how to center your knife. It's possible I could do that and get it to center, but I'm going to pay 200 bucks for a knife. I want it to be, this appears to be completely and totally unused. The edge feels brand new, right? So I'm going to guess the centering was like this. The set, for 200 bucks, the centering needs to be on, right? That's what I think. Um, the uh, blade does lock up completely and totally solid. And there is a uh, exposed stop pin back here, which is fine. There's no issue. And I think we have shouldering. Yeah, we do have some shouldering. So that's always appreciated, right? That'll slow down lock wear over time. Not that I think that that would be an issue. The lock stick is actually loosening up as I'm doing this. Even more, there's less of a click now, which is just more evidence towards what I always say. Don't freak out about lock stick. It's fine, <laughs> unless unless you're having to pry it apart, right? Um, this is a really cool knife. I like the profile. I like how this looks. I think both the micarta and the um, the uh, carbon fiber one look great. I probably would have gone for carbon fiber. Again. Corners up here a little bit sharp. There's some T6 screws and there's a lot of them. These areas down here, I think they could have done with a little more knocking down. It's a little bit thick. Some people are gonna call that really thick, but some people really like it to um, fill out the hand. The pocket clip uh, looks great. Uh, I, I love that it's titanium. It's very low, so it's gonna fight your um, pocket just a little bit. It's a, it's a bummer that this thing isn't perfectly centered because you have all these contrasts. I mean, it's very, that it's very visually unappealing to see, you know, OD green and then titanium and, and the OD green on the backspacer and it all, it looks so flush and beautiful. And then the, the fact that the blade is, um, you have these two areas right here that are cut and you just want to see it go perfectly centered, but it's not. Again, it's a pretty simple adjustment to get it centered, but there's a chance that it just won't. Maybe there's something wrong, you know, where it, it needs to, you know, be centered, but I could have just got a wonky one, right? Um, this is really cool. It's unfortunate that this is, um, that this is discontinued or that it's not available. Right? I don't want to say discontinued. Maybe it's just unavailable right now. Um, things that I could live with, you know, I can live with the T6 screws. Um, I can live with the thickness stuff that I think would have made this much better for me was this area here. The teeth need to be knocked down. This area in here needs to be knocked down. The edges need th those that right there. Those are more bothersome than anything else in the knife and the centering those things. Other than that, we have a really solid knife using premium materials. I don't think they were off on the price. I think this is great. It's obviously a very high quality item. And even with these little issues, do I think I could take this out, work with it and trust it? Yeah, hundred percent. This is cool. I think MBK does some great stuff or Monterey Bay knives uh, obviously has, um, you know, they, they make really high quality products. And I think this is cool. If you can find this on the secondary market right now for a reasonable price, I think you're going to be happy with it. Um, but uh, for everybody else, um, you know, uh, wait and see if maybe they do another one. I, I honestly don't know, you know, if they will or not. It's not something I can like readily recommend. I mean, would I recommend this knife if it was available at $200? Yeah. Yeah, I think I would. I think most people would be happy with it. Most, that I can, most of the things that I can say are pretty minor nit nitpicks. Um, the biggest thing being, again, <laughs> for the third time, the edges and the centering. Uh, other than that, I think this is great. That's um, that's really all that I can say about this knife. Um, thank you again to Mild Mannered EDC for letting me take a look. Be sure to follow him. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Metal Underscore Complex. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.